Sergio Perez and Carlos Sainz brought the drama to what was already a highly anticipated Grand Prix in Azerbaijan. But the crash has effectively cost their teams a lot of valuable points in what seems to be a constant four-team fight at the front in the remainder of 2024. With Red Bull now losing the seat to McLaren in the Constructors' Championship and with their budget being thinned out even more after Perez's sustained damage to the RB20, could we see more trouble for the Austrian team in the last seven races? And if so, will it come at the expense of Verstappen's Drivers' Championship? Before we start our video, I'd like to introduce you to our sponsor, NordVPN. Are you tired of slow internet and have your reasons to not trust online security? We've got some exciting news. We teamed up with NordVPN, a leader in internet security, to bring you a solution that speeds up your connection and keeps your online activities safe from prying eyes. NordVPN is all about giving you both freedom and security online with super fast servers all over the world. Now, here's the best part for the F1 community. With NordVPN, you can watch every Formula One race live no matter where in the world it's happening. Whether races are blocked in your country or just hard to access, NordVPN makes it easy to watch without hassle. Just download the app, install it on your device and connect to a server in a country where F1 is showing live. It's as simple as that. So you can forget about the annoying message of video not available in your country. And remember, using NordVPN isn't just great for streaming F1, it also protects your personal information from hackers, keeps your data safe when you're on public Wi-Fi, and even helps you find better deals online by changing your virtual location. So, don't let slow speeds or cyber threats put a damper on your day. Upgrade your internet experience with NordVPN. Click the link in the description and pin comment now. Let's enjoy the speed and safety of NordVPN together and never miss a moment of Formula 1 excitement. Want to give it a try? Click our special link below and you'll get four extra months free on a two-year plan. It's safe to say that the moment of the Azerbaijan's Grand Prix was the crash between Sainz and Perez, where the Mexican driver had briefly lost position to the Spaniard after trying to overtake Leclerc in Turn 1. However, when Perez tried to regain that lead after the exit of Turn 2, it seemed like Sainz wanted to push Perez off a bit to the left. But that push has turned out to be a terminal one for both of them, as they have found the barriers in a very fierce crash. The emotions were running high, which could have been heard from Perez's radio, as the Mexican driver was on track to have his best race finish in quite a while, even ending up on the podium. Furthermore, this would have been a great boost in the Constructors' Championship for Red Bull, because in the worst case scenario, even if he failed to overtake Leclerc, who was burning out his rear tyres from chasing Piastri for P1, he would have bagged 15 points for Red Bull. Considering the fact that they are now 20 points behind McLaren in the Constructors' Championship, this is a serious point to think about. But what is also a massive issue is that Red Bull needs to think about after today's race are the planned upgrades they had for the RB20 because a lot of their money would now have to go to the repair of Perez's car. Of course, we cannot say whether or not the new flexi wing that the team had planned for Austin has already been approved by the budget of the Austrian team, but if it wasn't, and if it was yet to be developed, the crash of Perez would definitely make a dent in Red Bull's hope of bringing a bit more life to the RB20. The crash between Perez and Sainz has different points of views, where many fans have also blamed the Red Bull driver for misjudging his overtaking move and not doing it in a proper manner. But in the heat of the moment, different judgments can be made, and we must not forget that this was a move for the last podium place, one that Perez might not have even found himself in had he not gotten past Leclerc successfully at the beginning of lap 50. It was obvious that Leclerc didn't have any tyres left, so maybe the smarter thing for the Red Bull driver would have been to wait for a proper move in the penultimate lap and make sure that P2 would have been possible in a clean way. Still, there was one situation that's being vastly discussed in this entire carnage, and that's the fact that Sainz tried a move on his teammate after using the situation in Turn 1 and gaining a position on Perez. What Sainz could have easily done is defend his position without trying to gain an additional place on Leclerc, who the team said will have a priority in the remainder of the season because of the Drivers' Championship is far from over. Instead, Sainz tried to make a move on Leclerc that ended up with him being very close to Perez entering Turn 2 and everything spiralled out of control from there on. It will definitely be labelled as a racing incident because Sainz was following Leclerc's line ahead, and despite him taking the turn to the left that started the entire carnage, it wasn't as aggressive and maybe Perez should have known better than overtaking at this part of the track. Again, it's something that has different points of view, but at the end of the day, it's Ferrari and Red Bull who have lost the most out of it. 
Both of these drivers have been summoned to the stewards as they will have to give proper explanation for their behaviours and their moves. And I'm almost certain that the Maranello team would like to have a talk with their driver that's in departure because he did cost them a lot in the remainder of the season too. Sainz not finishing the race meant that the Italian squad was stripped away from at least 12 points or maybe 15 had the Spaniard managed to hold on to the third position. Although he did take out Perez in the crash, Verstappen and Norris gained two positions based on this incident, which means that he effectively gifted four points to McLaren and Red Bull, even though the latter one wouldn't hurt because he also effectively took 15 points away from the Austrian team from this crash. And if we're to look at this from the obvious perspective, the biggest winner here is McLaren. The Woking based squad have taken points away from Red Bull in the Constructors' Championship by Piastri winning and Norris finishing P4, one place ahead of Verstappen and cutting the lead by an additional three points thanks to having the fastest lap of the race. Having the rocket ship as many fans describe the MCL38 to be, it was to be expected that Norris would make a lot of overtakes at this track, which provides the longest straight on the calendar with just over two kilometers. But had the strategy played out a bit better with the pit stop, Norris could have ended up in a position or two higher than where he did. Be that as it may, it is still a race that he would take in his bag without any hesitation after the controversial exit in Q1 where he went off wide in turn 16 and then had to lift the throttle due to a brief yellow flag. Something that the Woking Bay squad has complained to the FIA about. On the other hand, the biggest losers of this weekend are Red Bull. Even before the crash of Perez, the constant complaints from Max have made it obvious that the car is nowhere to be driven. And having the race at P6, the Dutchman hoped for a better race pace and one similar to the one that his car showcased on Friday. But the late changes of the car before the qualifying made this mission impossible. And when talking about it, the three-time world champion said, I would rather put the setup back to what we had before qualifying, but that's not possible now. I'm bummed out that I went in that direction. Normally, it can be positive. Only on a bumpy street circuit, it is just too extreme. You can't change anything about it now, so you have to make the best of it. And the general feeling is that this was definitely the worst race of Max's season so far, potentially even in his career if we're to ignore last year's Singaporean Grand Prix. The Dutchman finished 25 seconds off the lead. He was outqualified by his teammate for the first time this season, including the sprint events too. And compared to Perez, who was fighting the Ferrari drivers up front and was going to secure a podium if everything had gone his way, Verstappen was defending against Russell and struggled to get past Norris, who had worn out hard tyres in the first stint. Even before Norris caught the DRS from Albon, Verstappen had his own struggles and missed the breaking point at turn 15, which put additional pressure on the Dutchman to keep up with the MCL38, as well as Albon, who was surprisingly keeping these two giants behind him for quite some time. The RB20 was nowhere to be found in Max's hands in the Baku. And while this was a race to forget for the three-time world champion, the further development of it could receive additional hits from Perez's crash, as the team would be forced to repair the car for the remainder of 2024. Obviously, the fact that they've already sacrificed a bit of the RB21 in order to help the current version of the car doesn't help either. So, with all of this in mind, do you think that Red Bull are under serious threat of losing both championships with seven races and three sprint events left to go? Let us know in the comments below and once you do that, make sure to click on the video, it's appearing on your screen right now.